The computer technology we have today is based on an architecture that was designed over 70 years ago in the 1950s. The silicon chip is limited by the physical capacity. It's clear now that the computers of the future will be a little bit different. At the moment, we are working towards a concert where we will showcase the biocomputer that we are developing. This performance is really, really important for us because it will be the moment where we will be able to take this research out of the lab into the real world, where we will show to the public, well, this is our new technology, look, and it works. I am Professor Eduardo Miranda, head of the Interdisciplinary Center for Computer Music Research at Plymouth University. ICCMR is a research center dedicated to all things to do with music and technology. One of the projects that we developed in my lab with a team of researchers, including PhD students, is what we call the Biocomputer Music Project which is looking into how new modes of computation, new kinds of machines based on biological media may constitute in the future new kinds of computers, new kinds of systems for music. We are looking into harnessing the behavior of a, an organism called uh, Fissarum polycephalon. Researchers have found ways to harness the behavior of this organism to implement a, an electronic component called the memistor. On a kind of crude level, you can describe the memristor as a resistor that possesses a memory. The way the circuit component works is that when applied with a current in one direction, it has one resistant state, whether it be a high or low resistance state, and when the current changes direction, you have the alternate resistance state. On the ramp up to say 8 volts, on the way to 10 volts, you'll get one reading of current and then on the way down to 8 volts again after reaching 10 volts, you'll get another reading, which it will be completely different even though it's at the same voltage. I'm Ed Braund, I'm a PhD student here at Plymouth University, uh, studying under Eduardo Miranda in the ICCMR. I've always been sort of a, a a fan of new and an emerging technology. Um, the interesting thing to me was to be able to research on sort of the cutting edge of technology and science, but also have that driven by sort of creativity and being able to play around and have these kind of playful experiments with this new technology. And that can be part of the research. So for Sarum polycephalum, it's a myxomycete. Essentially, it's a plasmodial slime mold. It's a single-celled organism. And as it grows, it creates this network of protoplasmic veins that, that connect these foraging efforts of fan-like pseudopods, which are dispersing to try and find food, and it leaves behind this kind of tail of veins that allow it to distribute some intracellular components around. It develops this network of coupled biochemical oscillations of things like calcium, and this creates electrical behaviour, which we can read, and that correlates to physiological states as well. We're harnessing um, living biological entities and, and these entities do have a certain amount of variation component to component. So you will get something that sounds reminiscent each time if you play in the same piece every time, but with sort of subtle variations. So the pianist is playing music and we hear that as sound, while the organism, we, we don't know that it can understand sound, so we translate it into a language that we know it can understand and we send this through and then we look at how the organism responds to this language that we put through. So in this case, the notes are represented by voltages because the organism understands voltages, and then the organism responds by varying levels of resistance. And then we take this information and take it back into musical notes, which in real time create this kind of accompaniment for the pianist. For the composition biocomputer rhythms, the setup works as follows. There are a couple of uh, microphones there which will send information to the biocomputer. So the biocomputer listens 
to what I play, stores this information, processes the information, and produces music back while I'm playing the piano. The way that the biocomputer plays the piano is through uh, those electromagnets that you can see on top of the strings there. The information from the biocomputer is translated into vibrations. These vibrations then are relayed to the system and the electromagnets vibrate the strings of the piano. So this allows me to obtain two kinds of timbres from the piano. The same electromagnet systems that we use to vibrate the strings of the piano, they are also used to vibrate the percussion instruments you've got here. So we designed the system in a way in which there are certain probabilities during the composition that some of the notes that are played by the biocomputer are then transferred to the percussion instruments. So this allows the system to be a little bit more creative while it is interacting with me. Because of the behavior of this um, organism, which is a living entity, we are not able to predict exactly what kind of music it will produce back. We reckon that we can create a machine that is creative. One of the things that is so exciting about this project is that we are a computer music laboratory. We are artists, composers, using technology and creativity. But in this case, we are actually developing the technology. We are looking into new things that the industry has not produced yet. And by building this, we hope that we will be contributing to the development of computer science itself. I think that what we are developing here is going to have an impact on how computers will be built in the future. You probably will be able to have a computer that is kind of a living organism. And that is really different from what we have today. This is the very beginning of a journey. We don't know how long it is going to take. First of all, it was the most listenable performance. It was not something that put you off listening. It was something that drew you in. It was a genuine sense of it being a performance. And uh, I, I thought that sound was very important throughout. 
it wasn't a case of the technology simply being driven by the pianist. There was a genuine sense of partnership, which I thought was quite extraordinary. It almost defies description. It's, it's amazing. The language that I've been hearing people use is that this slime listens and responds. To see the, the connectedness with all the different musical instruments and see things begin to happen when Eduardo is not playing the piano is quite extraordinary. It gives you a glimpse into you know, the universe that we don't understand, mere mortals like me do not understand. I think it's quite amazing, absolutely. This is cl clearly pioneering um, and we're getting used to the situation where things that are pioneering in one year are kind of normal five years down the line. So I look forward to having that in my living room.